Shaq's house. 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 <laughs> What's up, Shaq House? Just how y'all doing? It's your boy Shaq House here. Hope your week's been going well. Yeah, today, yesterday was my Friday. I took the rest of the week off. Yeah, so what I got for you this week, um, mutant image projectors. Yeah, we're going to talk about the image, some of the image projecting mutants from the X-Men universe today. That's what we're going to be talking about. And as usual, I'm shamelessly plugging below 301 Colored Commentators, my podcast about two black guys from the state of Maryland giving their hot take on pop culture. The Victory Formation Lounge podcast below. Um, Rexco Comics, local publisher here in the state of Maryland. And last but not least, shout out to my boy, Naeem Thompson, childhood friend of mine, who's going to be on that Bravo reality show, Love Without Borders, tonight. Check that out. Yeah, um, right now, Mutant Image Projectors, check it out. Hope you like it. Argue away and thank you for subscribing to Shaq Housers. Thank you for that. And if you haven't and you're watching right now, please subscribe below. Check this out. Genesis, Tyler Dayspring. Tyler Dayspring possesses the mutant power to forge a mental link with the minds of others. Through this link, he can telepathically affix himself to a person's memories and thoughts and visually display them as psychoplasmic holographic projections hanging in thin air in full visual clarity and surround sound. He can also project thoughts and memories from his own mind as well. Artie. Arthur Maddox has a genetic mutation that grants him pink skin, no hair follicles, head bumps, an unusually shaped skull, large bulging eyes with no pupils, and deteriorated vocal cords which have rendered him incapable of speech. His mutant power, however, is telepathy, specifically projective telepathy. He is able to create holograms that represent his own or other people's thoughts and memories. Typically projected like thought bubbles, Artie's holograms are apparently completely silent but can move and become animated. They're not true illusions, they're just holograms. And so while the sudden appearance of a lifelike hologram might be startling, it can't truly deceive somebody into thinking a person or object is there when it's not. Artie is capable of thought casting, using his holograms to, pro to project events occurring some distance away from him. His mental imaging power is used for communication purposes to compensate for his muteness. His power is partially psychometric, making him particularly capable of focusing on places that he has been before or on people he has met before, especially if he's touched them. Artie can mentally search for, search for and locate people he's familiar with and over a much greater distance than he, than if he mentally searched for someone unfamiliar. Through this mind link, he can observe what's happening to that person now, scan through events that happened in the past to them, or illustrate their memories or private thoughts with his, with his holograms. Artie can also mentally probe, visualize, and track people with, without projecting visually. On rare occasions, he's demonstrated a mind lock power, actively shutting down the mind of someone so that they enter a fugue state. This requires some sustained concentration on his part, however, and the person will awaken whenever Artie's concentration is broken or if he turns his attention away from them. It's been stated that the language center of his brain is different than a normal human's, as he thinks entirely in images instead of words. After M-Day, Artie was confirmed as depowered, but he still retained his muteness and his physical deformities. When he joined the Fantastic Four Future Foundation, he was given a helmet invented by Valeria Richards that mimics his mutant imaging power. Somehow, his mutant power was restored, and he's been seen on the mutant island nation of Krakoa. Mirage Danielle Moonstar developed two mutant powers during puberty. First, she can establish a quasi-telepathic rapport with animals and insects, allowing her to read their minds, project images from their minds, and see through their eyes. She can communicate with them as well, communicate with, communicate with animals, primates, but not including human beings, members of the dog and cat families, including wolves and mountain lions, for example, aquatic life, and even insects, exchanging thoughts and empathic impressions with them, as well as psionically asking these creatures for assistance. Her power is even effective on individuals with animal hybrid-like powers, like her teammate Wolfsbane, for example. Danny later became one of the Asgardian Valkyries, and this gave her a presence of death, detectable and feared by Asgardian races and others sensitive to such things. Her powers as a Valkyrie allowed her to forecast someone's imminent death by perceiving their own personal private image of death looming over them, 
be it an angel, a priest reading last rites, etc. If she chose to act, she could sometimes prevent these deaths from coming to pass, or even fight the personification of death itself to preserve the life of someone that it had come to take. Later, after coming into contact with a reality-warping woman named Arcadia DeVille, Mirage accidentally became linked with the quantum energy that Arcadia commanded, giving her new powers that developed over time. Danny's power now caused her skin to blow with, glow with blue light, with flickering stars visible on her flesh. She developed sensory powers allowing her to detect distortions in the elements of the planet's electromagnetic field and could expel a rush of concussive energy that would blast things into barriers. And blast, blast through most barriers, I'm sorry. Danielle could also affect matter on a submolecular level, which she could do by disintegrating or liquefying solid objects and heal the wounds of other people. But ultimately, Arcadia evolved into Queen of the Star Swords and was defeated, causing Danny to lose these powers. Her second ability that she developed during puberty is the one in question. That's her image projecting power. Yes. She can manifest three-dimensional images resembling holograms. These images are visual concepts from the minds of others or herself. Her power operates by summoning psionic energy into our environment and allowing the subconscious minds of other people to guide the forms they take. Initially, Danny could only use her power to summon up a person's greatest fear and project it for them to experience, creating images based on a person, animal, or situation they fear most of all. These, Im these fear images lock onto the mind of her victim and trigger anxiety and panic rea reactions, compelling them to accept the image as though it was real. Because the image is keyed to a specific individual, Mirage and everyone else in the same vicinity will think of the image as an illusion, even if someone there is sharing the same fear, like arachnophobia, for example. The seeming materialization of the object of his or her greatest fear or heart's desire varies invariably has immediate emotional impact on the person from whom Mirage has drawn the image from. Mirage's images dissolve and cease to exist as soon as she ceases to maintain sufficient concentration to keep them visible. As time passed though, Mirage learned to create a wider variety of images by tapping into different areas of a person's mind, herself, or others. She began creating images of someone's greatest heart's desire, for example the perfect man, the things they think of when they think of a home or friends, etc. By causing people to see what they expected in, to see in a situation, she could even disguise her appearance and that of others behind her images. Mirage could also use her power to derive and project mental images of, from several people at once. If, for example, she wants to make a group of people see the object of their greatest fear, each person in the group will see a different image or thing. Mirage was limited in the use of her power by her need to see the person from whose mind she was deriving images. She can use her power on a person even if he or she can only be seen by Mirage through binoculars, for example. She can't draw images from a person who is standing a few feet from her for some reason, but behind her, but behind something she can see through. She can't, nor can she derive images from a person that she sees on a live TV set, who's not actually within her immediate vicinity. But her ultimate potential is to be able to cause her images to become tangible entities of psionic force, solid energy. After spending some time in Asgard, Mirage returned with her power having taken on a secondary mutation, apparently having adapted itself to her time with the Valkyries. She now generated psychoplasmic energy as a charge from her hands, which she could then reform at will into different shapes, like an energy dagger or most commonly a bow and arrows formed out of mental energy. Striking a target with these psychic plasmic arrows will cause them to be overwhelmed by their own greatest fears, painful memories, or psychological trauma, triggering a neurosynaptic shock that temporarily incapacitated her victims. And unlike her previous versions of her power, only Danny and her victim were aware of the specific fear that's being produced or the trauma being produced. All right, some of you are gonna wanna know who can win in an actual fight. Well, evidently, Artie can't fight. All he can do is act like a mime. Danny Moonstar, she's one of the original New Mutants. A full-blooded Cheyenne, like my men Forge. Why they never interacted? She's an excellent archer, tracker, swimmer, equestrian. She's got training in shield, and that's made her an experience in unarmed combat. And she's an expert markswoman. Now, Tyler Dayspring, he's Cable's son. Yeah, he was born in the 40th century, and he was trained since birth in military tactics, guerrilla warfare, and other combat disciplines. 
and for years in this era, he was posing as a simple arms merchant named Tolliver, who employed his father's group, the Six Pack, his father's clone, Strife, and most notably, Deadpool. Based on those alone, Tyler would kill Danny and Artie. And for the record, Tyler is Cable's biological son, so you can forget that adopted Paris Hilton mouthful of dick nonsense. Marvel put out this Summers Family tree right here in X-Men Legends number two, solidifying their blood relationship once and for all. Which brings us to his power comparison to the others. I mean, with Tyler's lineage, both parents being telepaths and telekinetics, how did he get such a comparatively weak power? I mean, of the three of these people in question, and because he hasn't used his power as extensively as the other two, he's kind of the basic bitch of the group. I mean, forget watching those old family memories on a film projector, Tyler's power makes him a walking version of that. Yeah, have him over for Christmas or Thanksgiving, he'll project your fondest or worst memories in your living room. But one capability that his power has that the others don't, full clarity and surround sound color, sound, and everything, like one of those holograms that R2-D2 from Star Wars would project. Additionally, his power was telepathic in nature. Now, Artie Maddox has the most potential as a telepath. He has such potential, but these writers prefer to treat him like a deaf mute child. I mean, being on Krakoa, how'd he get his power back anyway, by the way? Crucible? And if so, then why the hell didn't the Resurrection 5 fix his vocal cords so he wouldn't be a poor man's black boat for the rest of his life? I kid, I kid. But his image projecting power has been inconsistent over the years. I mean, originally he just projected mental holograms of thoughts and memories for all to see. Sometimes moving, sometimes not, but no sound. But later, once he joined Generation X, his power was dumbed down as thought bubbles with pictograms. He may be a visual processor, but what he was like before his power manifested is unknown. But of the three in question, he's the only true telepath. Danny Moonstar, Mirage, Mirage all her abilities are quasi-telepathic. Yeah, she can't read minds or outright manipulate minds or actual project. But the difference between her and between all three of them? Artie's and Tyler's image projecting power is telepathic. And Artie, he almost exclusively uses his power for display purposes only. He projects images from his mind to explain what he's thinking without speaking, because he can't. It can be observational as well, allowing him to project things that he or other people have seen in the past or are currently seeing, and he accomplishes this by actually seeing images in their minds. Now Mirage, as I said before, she's quasi-telepathic as it pertains to her image projecting ability and her animal telepathy too. I mean, she starts off with an idea of what she wants her power to find in a person's mind, but, doesn't, but she doesn't see the image until she actually manifests it as a 3D image. Yeah, she doesn't create the images themselves. Yeah, think of her power more like a golden retriever. She tells it to go fetch a person's greatest fear, but she won't know what it is until the puppy comes back with it in his mouth. She herself doesn't look through a person's mind to find information. But another difference between her and Tyler and Artie is that she could potentially solidify her images. And we all know what solid energy can do. Look at Ulysses Claw, for God's sake. So of all of them, I'd say, and for nostalgic, for nostalgic sake, Danny Moonstar, she takes the win for this. All right, that's what I got for this week, Shaq Housers. I ain't gonna tell you what I'm coming out with next week because I currently don't know. But tune in, I know you'll like it. And thanks for subscribing. And if you haven't, please subscribe below and check out the links I got in my comment section, or I mean in the description section. Have a good week, Shaq Housers. See you then. Later. Mansion, apartment. Shaq House. Yes!